Hi, Gratitude Seeker, and welcome to episode 20 of the Gratitude Podcast. Today, I have a really, really cool guest with lots of energy, a high vibe, and uh, a lot, a lot of interesting things to share with you. He is Zino Soriano from Body Brilliance Nutrition. He is a high vibe, heart-centered health luminary, holistic health coach, holistic nutrition specialist, holistic fitness coach and transformational speaker on conscious living and expanding consciousness. He is known as the conscious health alchemist as he creates some amazing secret energy boosting elixirs and fun food fantastic recipes that shall knock you outside the galaxy. This is really interesting and I'm sure I got your attention. His belief is that health and well-being is the foundation of life and it is your link to expansion and evolution. But more on this, I will let Reno tell you. Hi. Uh, well, I kind of always been into health ever since I was a little kid. I, uh, I remember making my own pancakes and BLTs when I was like four and five. And uh, I grew up in a family that, you know, Italian background, Italian family. And my mother and father always made, you know, homemade breads and cheeses and We had our garden, so I grew up with some pretty good stuff, but even though my mom made great stuff, I always had a kind of a draw to make my own unique creations, and so it was kind of fun making my own like BLTs and pancakes, but I would always throw in unique um, ingredients to kind of vary it up, and uh, my parents also had a pizzeria. And oh, I would, cool. Yeah, so I would make my own little mini pizzas and mini strombolis, and I would throw in Like I'd make them like unique shape. So it was always, I always had this creative connection to food. So it wasn't just enough to, you know, just put food on the plate for me. I have, it's more of an artistic expression. And so, uh, so it's just always been natural, but I've always been in the fitness and health. And then, um, you know, long story short, I went through a time period where I actually uh, went through uh, some health challenges. So I worked out and I ate well, but something wasn't right. And so it turned out being that I didn't deal with emotional and mental well-being too well. So I kind of was imbalanced and kind of caused me to go on a conscious journey and uh, resolve that. And uh, the physical is easy. That's the easy part. And what I've discovered, it's the mental emotional that, you know, sometimes we hold on to stuff and we don't know that we're holding on to it or we've been imprinted uh, from from family and society and, and we're carrying these energies and belief systems that kind of bog us down. So for me, I cleaned the cash, so to speak, cleared my field. And, and so I'm here to just show people a new, let's say a new pathway to health and wellness. Because uh, if we look out there, especially in, you know, I'm in, in, in the United States, we have more health information in this country than ever before, yet we have more overweight and unhealthy people than ever before. So something we might want to pause and and maybe use a higher consciousness level, but a new way to input nutrition in our bodies. In this country, we ha- you know our food supply is altered. It's it's a lot of GMOs and a lot of uh, hybridized uh, ingredients in our food supply. So we you got to be very careful that you know you can't always believe what you hear or read. And I always tell people don't even believe a word I say. But I have a pretty good track record of shifting people very easily, quickly, and in ways that boggles their mind. Like, I, you know, expressions like, I never thought I could feel like this. I'm like, yeah, because you've never input it and taken care of yourself uh, in a way that is ideal for you. So for me, your health is your link to expansion and evolution. It is your foundation to your entire life. As your health goes, the rest goes. So in this country, we have so many people trying to manifest and spending lots of money trying to do affirmations, and it's so laborious. And I tell people, chill out and relax and focus most of your energy on getting fit, healthy, and radiant because it takes life force energy to manifest. And so most people are doing it butt backwards. I call it butt backwards. They're they're (laughs) trying to manifest and create without having – an abundance of life force energy. So if you want abundance in your life, you need an abundance of life force energy, you know, life 
it's called life word. I call it life words. Uh, the Asians call it chi. Other cultures call it prana. Call it what you like, but it's the holy grail. And yet there's so many people trying to manifest by neglecting their health. And so I'm here to say, let's flip it around. Let's focus on your health and watch what happens. And I've had literally miracles showing up in people's lives when I coach them because they finally get, oh my God, I have the energy now. Oh my, I can actually enjoy my life now. I can actually enjoy my time with my partner. I can actually enjoy my money now that I have all this extra money. So the deal is, is abundance comes when you have an abundance of life force. And with that, creative ideas come, your, your higher faculties kick in because there are multi-dimensional components to brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. And if you are ingesting compounds that are toxic and, and if you're dehydrated and you're stressed out, your, your higher faculties aren't going to be kicked in. And that's where a lot of people are at. They're, they have low vibe, uh, especially in this country. I, I don't know, you know, there's other parts of the world, probably a little different, but in this country, uh, very uh, depleted society. And so I go to a health food store every day and I look around and go, wow, I don't see very many healthy people. So from my message is we need to use a higher consciousness level. We need to input uh, healthier constituents in our body, but your health is multidimensional too. You know, mm -hmm. it includes your mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being as well. And I think most people miss that. They think it's about what they put in their, in their body and if they go work out. And that's a very small definition of health. I think it's one part. But we also have to consider, okay, who are we in a relationship with? Because that's impacting your health. It's either uplifting you or pulling your health down. Uh, where you live, uh, you know, are you living in a place that's harmonic and clean? And again, it's all about frequencies. And, and these frequencies are either uplifting you or pulling you down. And most people, the way they have their lives structured, it's pulling their energies down. They, they're with people, they're with partners that pull their vibe down. They go to a career or a job that's pulling their vibe down. They live in a place that's grunt. So it's, it's, we need to reassess how we're going to go about life. And if you're blinged out, what I call like radiant, like a sun. And if you have an abundance of energy, look out, you're, you are unstoppable. And that's when you can go out and tap into your higher potentials. And I see a lot of people doing it. The other, you know, they're trying to manifest and they don't have the life force energy. And I say, if you want it, go to the health, forget all these labors practices. If, if they serve you great. Uh, but I tell people there's an easier way. You don't have to exert all this effort to try to manifest because you are already where you are already that magnet. You just got to clear all these things that are in the way, all these frequencies and belief systems and just tap into your true self. And that's where I see people having a lot of issues is they're buying too many paradigms and they're doing all these laborious practices that are putting them in stress mode and they're putting these frequencies out to the universe and then they get back and then they wonder why their lives aren't changing. It's because they're not really congruent with their true self. They're trying to force their way through life. And I think if they would just relax a little and chill, life would be much more beautiful. So, Yeah. So um, that's why um, I wanted to speak with you and um, uh, to, speak to you to speak to, our, um, to my audience because um, I believe that uh, it's really hard to be grateful when uh, you are you are unhealthy when you don't have enough energy when um, for instance uh, how was it for you when you you had health issues what was was it easy for you to be grateful or uh, no the, actually life was you know, er, everything was a challenge because it's like you know I, I again I was healthy most of my life and then all of a sudden I'm not feeling like well and I was confused like oh my god and I have all these dreams and goals and I I couldn't do it why because I didn't have the life force energy I felt off and when you feel off then you treat other people around you not appropriately you're basically not yourself and so that's the deal is what I see is a lot of people they're 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 moody they're treating their partners inappropriately they're they're sabotaging their careers they're they're doing all these things they're addicted to whatever alcohol and drugs um, and, and so, yeah, it's a, it's a big challenge when, uh, <clears throat> you don't feel well. And so for me, it's, again, it's your fulcrum. It's, it's your foundation to everything. It's not just about the food you put in your body. It, it encompasses your entire life. You know, who, the people you spend time with, same thing. How, how do you feel when you're around them? Are they uplifting you or are they pulling you down? And most people hang out with people that are 
they're kind of pulling them down. You know, call it. Uh, some people call it, uh, you know, they're draining your energy or what? Yeah. So that's your clue when you, so get a, a, a feeling of when you're with people or where you're at. And that's your clue of how, if it's either pulling you up or pulling you down, it's very simple. So that's the, what I teach my clients is how does it feel? Is it pulling you, Do you feel amplified when you're with someone or in that location or with that job, or is it pulling you down? And that's your guide and that's your feedback loop from life. And that's how you can start changing your life. If, if you're with someone and they're draining you, find some new friends and move on. It's okay. You know, there's a comes a point in time. Sometimes you got to let people go. And, uh, and so life can be much more beautiful. if People start using their own intuition, but to feel their way through. How does it feel? <clears throat> how does my, how does my career feel? How does my partner feel? How does my, uh, my home feel? And uh, a lot of people are just, they just, they're creating unconsciously, and that's the issue. And they think they're creating consciously, but they're not because th their lives aren't really shifting and because they're not really looking at his energy and they keep falling for the same patterns and they're still with the same person and they're still in the same job. So, yeah. All right. So um, I know that you're very passionate about what you're doing and uh, um, the work that you do with people. And this is, this is amazing. Um, do you have a, a quote on gratitude that that you enjoy um i'm not i'm not too big on quotes i'll be very honest i i, I there's a few that really you know i think like the greats like einstein have some fantastic quotes and i think that that guy in particular was a mystic i don't think he was a scientist i think the scientist part was his cover he was a very, <laughs> he was a very wise being and i think he kept his mouth shut for a reason <laughs> Because I think he knew a whole lot more than he was revealing, to be honest. And he had figured out some stuff, but he couldn't just come out and say it because, you know, the scientific community probably would have yeah. knocked him, whatever, pushed him out of the side. So, but I, I just admire people who keep it simple um, and, and basically steering people back to themselves. And that's what I do with my clients because I think, we're, we're in this society now and, and, and it is awakening, but I think uh, humans in general have be, keep giving their power over to someone else. Like they, you know, they put people on a pedestal and they, they follow these people and they go to seminars and read their book. And I, I think that's great on one level, but I think if people can just start valuing themselves deeply to really feel their value that they're just as valuable as that, you know, person that they think is, you know, fantastic and they got their lives rolling and they're teaching people some great things. You have the potential as well. And, but I, I think it's a, it's a human thing to seek outside yourself constantly. You're seeking. And, and that's what I see is the biggest impediment to human evolution is it's people have been programmed to seek outside and, and to always seek answers when the fulcrum is in your heart. And that's where your power pack is. And you have a big power pack and most people miss it. And that's what I see is like, they're trying and they're, they're spending all this money and they're exerting all this effort to try to expand. And it's like, wait a minute, you already have it. And you're kind of, you're trying to get it. And then trying to get it, you're actually devaluing yourself. So I think we need, we need the same thing. We need to use a, a higher consciousness level to really view ourselves as sacred beings that we're already there. There's nothing to get. There's nothing to ascend to. We're already here. It's just we have to remove the imprints and, and, and the, you know, the belief systems that are standing in the way. And that sometimes is a challenge because, you know, as a child, you may have gotten imprinted with mom and dad's limiting stuff and their projections. And that sometimes takes a while to – clear out but if you can do that and come to your fulcrum who you are is you're worth more than all the diamonds and the gold on the entire planet but most people don't see themselves as that and that's what i see is one of the greatest impediments and and people keep going you know they keep going they're trying but i think they they have to hit that point where they finally snap and say oh wow i do have it and I got it. And I don't need something. I don't need to, you know, go to that next seminar. I don't need to do these affirmations because I'm here. I just have to, I have to, I have to believe in myself. 
that I'm, I am already here, not that I'm going to ascend and get to that level. And I think it's a, sometimes it's hard to understand that because I didn't get that until one day I'm like, I got so tired of the labor stuff and the meditating and the affirmations and spending money on it. I was like, finally, I'm, I'm done. That's enough. It's so laborious and my life hasn't shifted. No, I'm done. And I finally just gave it up. And that's when things started shifting is when I finally said, I'm done with this labor stuff. I am fantastic. I'm great right now. And if that's not good enough and my life doesn't shift, oh, well, I'm, I'm not putting out that effort. And I'm not spending all this money and thinking that there's, I, got, I need healing. I don't think anybody needs healing. I think people just got to clean the muck and discover who they truly are. And that's when miracles happen. Awesome. Awesome. So um, what, what you're saying is that um, it's really important to appreciate ourselves more and to, to look within more and to look at the gifts we already have within and rediscover them and uh, enjoy what we already are. Yes. Awesome. And I, because I think it's very easy. The ego loves picking out the little imperfections yeah. and <laughs> always what's missing. And that's when you got to just take your power back and tell that part of your shh, quiet enough. And you have to start, let's look at the grandness of what you have. And the more you do that, the more you're going to say, oh my God. And so I tell people, appreciate who you are because there are people out there have it a million times worse. And that's what I always look at. You know, sometimes I look at a person, I'm like, just the other day, I saw a person in a wheelchair, no legs. I'm like, well, that person's got it pretty rough. I got to kind of cakewalk compared to them. So I'm going to shut up ego, you know, that's enough. <laughs> right. So that's what I do is when I see those things, I kind of go, I'm very grateful because there's a lot more other people that are worse off. And, but yet I still feel my value. I'm a very valuable being. And the more I see that, the more that other people feel it. And the more that things come into my life to reflect that. So it's, 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 that's another thing I see is people just don't value themselves enough or appreciate who they are. And that's where the gratitude comes in. Be grateful because you could be in a much harder position. And, and yeah, and the ego just, the, the ego just takes things and it embellishes. It makes you think that your story is the toughest and you have nothing compared to what some other people out there. So just start coming back to yourself and feel who you truly are. And again, that can be a challenge depending on what's going on uh, with your imprints and belief systems. But I think the more that you own it and declare it and say that you're already there, you don't need to go anywhere. That's the long scenic path. And I don't, I don't see many people faring too well doing that. I think you just got to come to discover who you are and command it of yourself, of your true self and, and start not buying if your ego's chirping and, and, being you know being ungrateful and picking all the nitpicking all these things that are wrong it's just a story and you got to drop it in some point you just you got to take your power back and that part of that chirping is not you yeah and that's 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 the when people can finally discover that that chirping voice all these years that's been running and running and running that's the biggest sabotager of of human lives it's the biggest disruptor of abundance and prosperity it's the biggest disruptor of your health that voice is not you and i tell people you have to take your power back because that thing is an impediment to your evolution people go oh no the ego's part okay have fun have fun uh having this this thing run the show it's when you finally take your power back and that thing starts shutting up and you really feel who you are that's when life takes on a new meaning but it, sometimes it takes a little bit to get to that point. But I tell people, you're already there. That chirping voice is not you. You need to learn to be present. You are awareness, consciousness. You're not a mind. Okay? Your mind is different than consciousness. Consciousness is pure presence. And when you finally get to experience that, look out. And I, and, and I tell people, if you want that experience real easy, very quickly, go out in nature and Leave your cell phone, leave all this stuff, get out, get out of all the distractions and cars, go out in nature where there's nothing and sit with mother earth and watch what happens to your life. Do that four or five days a week and ground, touch mother earth, sit on the ground, go to the beach, go, go hug a tree and watch what happens to you. We're, we're being inundated with all these frequencies. It's information overload. You can't, your, your, your brain mind system can't take it. 
and people are being pushed and left and right. They don't know who they are. Go in nature, connect with mama earth and watch what happens to your life within a few weeks. Wonderful. Wonderful. Actually, it's really interesting because, um, most of, uh, of my guests on, on this podcast recommended uh, going into nature to, to rebalance and to, re to find gratitude again. And, and this, is, this is really good stuff, yeah. <laughs> it's um, really important for us to do that because this is how we get back to who we are. And what I also wanted to, to add is... Um, the the way we see our ourselves and the way we value ourselves is very very important in our relationships in uh, when it comes to our work when it comes to uh, the relationship we have with money because when we uh, get to appreciate ourselves to value our our work our who we are um, all of the other things in our life change because it's only natural. Mm. People see us differently. Uh, they they give us more value because we give ourselves more value. So mm. uh, this is great stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm very curious about something. What do you do when it's hard to be grateful? When you're not in this high vibe energy mode? Yeah. And that's where number one is go out in nature. Number two is f find something. <clears throat> For me, it's sports. It's either working out, uh, and I've played ice hockey, you know, hockey, uh, tennis. But go out and forget about life for a while. Forget about all your all these problems. Go out and have fun. Laugh. Go go watch a funny movie. Go be with friends that are goofy. But you need to change the energy because if you keep in that vibe, you're only going to create more of it. And, and, and so, yeah, it's very hard to be grateful when you, you got life issues going on. So you need to disconnect from all of it. And it might mean take a, take a trip for two days, go out again, go rent a log cabin, go out in nature. So yeah, go, I go out in nature. I connect with animals. Animals are the e greatest gift on this planet. They're here for our benefit and the animals are connected they're completely connected. They're fully present. Just go look at a dog. You know, you can, you can leave the house, you know, you can leave your dog and, and come back five minutes later and the dog will greet you as if you were gone for days. They're, they're just pure love and joy. Same, all animals are that way, you know, whether it's horses or, you know, cats, they all have their own unique energy, but they're all, they're all aware I mean, they're not animals per se. Like I view them as beings. They're they're pretty wise and conscious. That <laughs> you know, most scientists equate them to just they're just operating on instinct. I don't think so. They're very in tune, and it's funny just to watch them, and just be around them, and they change your vibration. And so for me, it's do things to disconnect from the all these serious things in life, and go play sports, go play, <clears throat> go have fun, be goofy. Um, do things off the wall. Do something that you've never done before, even if it scares the you-know-what out of you. Go jump out of a plane. Go do something. You got to change the energy because you're just you keep riding the same neural pathways. You keep riding the same paths of life. You're gonna keep getting the same stuff. So you got to change. Sometimes it's literally you got to take a leap, and that's where a lot of people are scared to do because they they, they you know it's, it's the ego loves comfort and and wants to. You know, once you run the same thing over, it, it loves commonplace. It loves the same, and we're not here to do that. We're if we're exp we're here to expand ourselves, and you can only do that by being expansive. And <laughs> so that means you got to expand out of your comfort zone. So go out and do fun things. If life's not flowing for you, it's not flowing for a reason because you're not taking your power. You're giving it away. You're doing you're doing this. You're running the same thoughts and. You got to get out of it. Go have fun. You got to find a way. Go watch funny movies and go be goofy with friends. But you got to disconnect from that energy because it will take you out. It'll slowly take you out and your life just gets to be more of a big mess. and It's not fun. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, do you have a story about uh, gratitude? Like um, something that inspired you to be more grateful as a person? A story well whether it's from your own life or a story that you that you know about 
Well, I personally, I see as we have this thing called our life and we have our life force. It's our greatest, it's the greatest gift we can give this planet. <clears throat> it's the greatest gift. Like just showing up in your full glory to show up in a room. You can change the molecules and atoms in a room when you walk in. Okay. I do it all the time. And I know because people's heads turn. I walk into the health food store and all these heads are turning. They don't know why, but they're feeling my vibe. And because I show up present, I show up my full glory. I'm healthy. I, I'm, I'm just a beat. I, I honor people and they don't know what's going on. I do, but it doesn't matter because you can, you can impact people with your vibration of how you show up. No words need to be said. So if you want to serve this planet, if you want to change this planet, you don't have to say a word other than clean yourself up, clean the, the imprints, clean the belief system, and show up as if you are a sacred being and value yourself to be that and watch what happens. And that's where, you know, a lot of people, they don't value themselves to that degree. The more you value yourself to that degree, the more the universe is going to remove these barriers and make life a little easier more and more and more until you see yourself as you're walking as a sacred being and you're impacting people with your vibration. That's why I teach what I teach. That's the main teaching is you can change this planet. You can change your, whether it's your partner, you can change your entire city by walking as fit, healthy, radiant, and happy. You do that, look out. No words need to be said. In fact, words will get in the way. This is what I, so words will actually get in the way of you being able to impact this, this world. And you're here, you have this life, you have one shot at it. What are you gonna leave? Memories, or are you gonna leave a legacy? Your choice. But if, you know, like if you're gonna leave one, why leave a memory when you can leave a legacy, but you have to choose it. And, and that's where it takes a very strong gumption from your heart and soul to say, I'm tired of this life this way. I'm going to bling out and I'm going to do it. And it's always, and I always tell people when I coach them, your health is bigger than you. It's not just about you. Cause if you do it just for you, it's not going to work. You're not going to let, it's not going to last. You're going to go back to your habits. You're going to go back to doing your addictions. If you make it about the entire planet, that's when you stick with it. That's when your vibe, increase it changes and that's when you start really experiencing miracles in your life when you make your life about the entire planet your vibe impacts other people and it has multiple implications you have no idea by you affecting one person you may have saved their life just by showing up in your full glory so for me it's like get fit healthy and radiant and watch what happens to your other parts of your life the other stuff is laborious and it's going to cost you a boatload of money and I haven't seen most people, you know, my friends and all these people I talk, it's like they're spending all this money. It's like, but your life hasn't really shifted because I think you're laboring too much. Just chill out, be more appreciative, get in tune with your body and feel your way through life. But radiate as brilliant as 10 million suns because you have that within your heart. And stop going out there. It's not out there. You got the power pack right here. It's in your heart. But most people are scared, you know what, to show that part of themselves. They're scared to show their true self. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's where it's a dishonor when you do that. So don't, shy, don't hide your light. Sh make people take notice of you. It's okay to shine. It's okay to reveal, yeah, even the insecure parts of yourself. Be honest, yeah? And so it's, it's okay. But come on out. Let us see your light. It's a, we need this planet needs it. How else do you think this planet is going to change? But again, you walk into a room, you can change molecules and atoms. I do it every day and your choice, or you can show up all contract it and, and guard it. And the universe is going to say, Oh, okay. <laughs> bong, bong. And you're going to keep getting gonged because you're showing up contracted. So you either walk through life, contract it and guard it, or here I am. <laughs> I'm here to serve and I'm going to bling out. <laughs> right? Wonderful, yeah. Wonderful. Um, I think it's also a matter of um, the way we have been educated. Uh, not, to, not to shine too much, not to be 
um, to, to be more contracted, to be um, in society, we have to, to be in a certain way, to act in a certain way. Um, how do you feel this uh, goes with uh, what you're teaching? Yeah, it's called conformity. Mm -hmm. And it, it is, it's programmed into to kids just by going to school. You, you're, you, the kids are being programmed. Oh, oh sit, stand in line. You better stay in line or else, you know, otherwise, but it's like, we're not here to conform. We're here to be unique. We're here to express ourselves. It's okay. But society says not. And that's where the problem is, is because most people are playing roles that mom and dad have projected onto them. They're, <clears throat> they're, yeah, going through society, just, having been batted down. I mean, when I was in school, I'm this high vibe, loud person. And, and my teachers are trying to tell me, Sh oh, no, go sit in the corner. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm a high vibe. You're not, I can't put me in this little cubicle for eight hours. Sorry, that don't work for me. So, I, you know, so yeah, this, school was a challenge for me because it was like, what is this? <laughs> you know, you <laughs> memorize all this pointless stuff. Come on. So, so yes, society imprints you, programs you for conformity. And I'm here to say that's dishonor. It's time to change. We need a new consciousness level. We need a new way of going about life. We need a new whole new school system because the current one obviously is, I'm sorry. These, some of these kids coming in and, you know, very, very awake, vibrant, and they have a consciousness, but they have challenges, see, because they're coming in with, they're expanded and they're trying to live in this, you know, conform to life. Uh-uh, not going to. And some of these kids, you know, what, what happens? They go get, a, you know, uh, drugs and addictions and they wind up getting messed up because they can't take it. The frequencies, number one for them are just, it's too stifling, it's too dense, but then they're not allowed to express themselves and sh reveal their talents because you have all these people looking at them like there's something wrong. There's nothing wrong with anybody. Some of these kids are very, even kids with autism and all the, you know, all the AD, there is no ADD. These kids are just expanded. It's the frequencies, these dense frequencies in this planet right now that are just stifling to them and they can't take it. And these kids are like on another dimension, right? I've met some of these kids. They're, they're totally in tune, but they're in another dimension. They can't, they can't connect to this dense frequency and they're kind of like wow and that's why some of these kids are at you know have issues but it's not that it's not an issue for them it's just being here yeah and then, and then society likes to put all these labels you got to stop the labels because you put a label on someone guess what guess what's going to happen they're going to they're going to try to fit that label yeah. and so a lot of people get screwed just because somebody has labeled them and then they play that part and so the deal is is we need massive change and we need people stepping into their brilliance. You got to stop hiding. We don't have time. We don't have much time to flip this thing because the trajectory at this point, we're riding, we're weeble wobbling on a fine line of becoming extinct as a species. This is not a joke. And so what I tell people is your health is bigger than you. Your life is bigger than you. We are out of time. Humanity has run out of time. You either step into your greatness or don't complain when the corrections come because universal forces will come in and at some point if we don't do it ourselves. So, so go shine. It's very simple. You don't have to hide anymore. Okay? It's a, it's a dishonor by playing small and playing roles and trying to please mom and dad. Get out of those comfort zones. Get in your own comfort zone. Get out there and go, go rock it. What are you here to show? And I'm talking to myself too, yeah? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. So um, ha have you always been a grateful person or um, did you find uh, gratitude at one point in your life? Um, I think what happened is I've always been pretty grateful, but not, not to the degree I am now. And, and the gratefulness comes to the degree to the degree and the higher I appreciate myself, that's, that's when I can be more grateful. And so, and I think that's the only way it can happen. So the more value you find in yourself, the more brilliant you allow yourself to share, the more appreciative you are of not only your life, but then everyone else's life and everyone else. 
Hmm, wonderful. Because it's all a reflection of you. So, so everything goes as you go, as your consciousness goes, okay? And so that's the deal. So for me, I'm becoming more and more grateful of myself because I'm like, I'm pretty cool dude, but I have a lot to offer. And I'm the only me, so I might as well be me 100, 100 million trillion percent and, <laughs> and impact people in a positive way while I'm at it, yeah? So. Wonderful, yeah. Uh, I didn't think of this perspective, but it's it's really good. Um, what I also wanted to ask you is, uh, if you could go back in time, um, what would you tell your younger self about gratitude? Like when you were young and you didn't know about uh, this stuff and about being the importance of being grateful for your life and for your, yourself, what would you tell your younger self? Um, I'd tell them you are a jewel. It doesn't matter what anybody else says or does. You're a jewel. You got it. And if somebody says otherwise, that's their funny opinion. And go out there and shine because you're impacting people everywhere you go. And it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks of you. Because the only thing that does matter is how you carry yourself, what you think of yourself, and is wanting to go out and do good things for other people. Because that's why we're all here. To contribute and to serve and to leave ripples you know if if you're going to come here and hide and be sh why why you know go, go leave a ripple make other people feel you go be big man i mean if you're if you're in a pool i'm gonna do a big can opener and just make lots of waves so everyone else feels it in that pool yeah why, why go in and kind of just like slowly dip your toe in and slowly go in Go in and make a big splash so other people feel you. That's why you're here. Beautiful, beautiful. Good stuff, yeah. Um, so um, in your life, do you, do you have some people that you are um, grateful for that you would like to mention? Well, even though it was challenging to be with my parents <laughs> coming in, <laughs> Uh, even in going through that, it's, you know, the, I see their, it's like they're little children. Everyone is inside. Yeah, it's just that <laughs> they, you know, they came from hard times. And so, so for me, it's like, I got it pretty easy compared to what mom and dad had. So, you know, and again, it was challenging because they came from a different era, a different consciousness level, a different country, and it was rough. And so they didn't, they didn't have any good modeling and they, you know, like my mom, you know, she family of 13 kids, my dad from wow. a family of 10 kids. And oh it was just like, nah, yeah. And so they never really had childhood. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, but even in going through as a child, it was pretty rough. I, you know, I, I value them. And they're uh, pretty amazing beings. You know, it's just like, they're like little children. So I kind of have a different perspective on them. Uh, you know, growing up as a child, wow, I wanted to be out of the house. <laughs> I didn't want to be around them. But looking back, looking at them now, it's like, they're like little children. And, you know, they, they had a rough and, 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 you know, you forgive them. I forgive them. They're, what, what are you going to, I mean, what are you going to, you know, so I, I, I've, totally flip my consciousness because I see a lot of people they're pissed at their parents, but it's like, Hey, you have it easy compared to them. You don't know their life. You know, you really don't know what they went through emotionally, mentally. So for me, it's like, you know, I, I, I value them more. And, uh, so, and also I value my girlfriend right now with someone who mirrors to me what, what I see sometimes in myself, like, Hey, you know, I'm a cool guy. So, and she kind of, she is a bright light in my life. So, and it's like, and I do the same for her and we kind of uh, have fun. It's all about having fun and expanding, so. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, do you have some people that have helped you in uh, uh, tough moments in your life that you are grateful for? Mama Earth. Mm. And Mama Earth and the animals. That's what, anytime I've had issues, I go out, sit on a rock, or go out in nature, and I connect. And I've had some mystical animal experiences. Uh, this past summer, <clears throat> I came within a foot, 
of a wild horse. Wow. <laughs> wild, wild horses don't, as soon as they see a human, they're, they're off. And I had actually a, several mystical experiences with wild horses in this one location near a river. And I, I got it. I actually got it on, on film and I got photos of it. Wow. And so, and so, yeah, and then I've had I've had um, a coyote come within 35 feet of me and just look at me and kind of he kind of knew I was cool, but coyote same thing in the daytime when they see a human they they run they're off. At nighttime it's different they're in the pack but uh this one was in the daytime sitting on a rock and I was appreciating life and I look over coyote 30 feet away, 35 feet away and I was like, "Hey." I look I yelled over to him, "How are you?" And he looked at me like, you know, I know you're cool, but I got some important things to do. <laughs> he kind of yeah. just walked away slowly. I've had birds come to right near my foot, land right at my foot, and behave as if I wasn't even there. Like, mm -hmm. literally. Like they, it's, So that's what happens when I'm teaching is when you're in one with yourself and one with the planet, the animals feel it. Okay? They see you differently. They, they sense you differently. And... The, you know mother earth then and, and the universe is talking to you differently if you're jammed and you're hiding and you got all this stuff in your field ooh, animals don't like that especially dogs dogs pick you out cats pick you out they can read your field they literally can read you from a mile away and so if you're kind of all you know skewed and you're you're kind of holding on to stuff and you, yeah the animals won't want to be near you but that's what happens when you're changing your your vibe and you start valuing yourself. You have these mystical experiences. The universe starts talking to you in funny ways. I've had you know many experiences. I could go on and on, but uh, but Mother Earth and the animals are my joy and bliss, and that's uh, I guess that's all about all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, wonderful, wonderful. So, um, where can people find you? Where can people see your work? You know. Uh, I got YouTube videos. You can just go to YouTube, type in my name. I have a whole list of um, videos. I have recipe videos. I have videos uh, of me just giving my perspective about like weight gain and uh, my perspective on health in general. Uh, but they can also go to my website at renosoriano.com. That's R-I-N-O, S as in Sam, O-R-I-A-N-O.com. I got some free downloads. I have on the, on the homepage, if you scroll down to the bottom, I got 12 recipes I give out for free that are some of my fun food, fantastic recipes. And I'm known to knock people's socks. Literally, I, I touch food and magical things happen, but I put like a creative fun twist on it. So it's healthy, fun, and it's delicious. It's appealing to the taste buds because a lot of healthy stuff is kind of bland and boring. So I've, I've transformed healthy to be fun and tasty and uh, knocks your socks off. So that's, yeah, so... Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Thank you. So um, it has been really great having you here. And I'm sure that um, our listeners will enjoy this uh, conversation a lot and the passion that you have for what you're doing. Um, thank you for being here. And um, if you have some uh, closing thoughts that you want to share. Go rock it, baby. Go shine. You're safe. It's okay. Please do. Uh, planet, we have come to that brink point. We can, we, you know, in the next 10 years, it's going to determine what, go, we need your help. We need your support. We need your vibration. We need you shifting molecules. That's how you're going to change this planet the most. Showing up like a sun, radiate, make people take notice of you, be extraordinary, be exceptional, be impeccable with your word, and leave a legacy. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Rino. Thank you, Georgian, for having me on.